policies and policies. So I will uh, now invite uh, the next speaker, Saloni Chopra. And again, with a very serious and honest uh, request to fit within the timing. Uh, hi, am I audible? Yes, you are. Are you going to share a PowerPoint? And uh, yes, one second, I'll share my screen for the presentation. Please do okay. so. And also, let's fit within the timing. Sure. One second. Where is it? Okay. Um, so um, my topic is uh, co-creative uh, narrative by experiencing the story <clears throat> and how participating in literature causes plot development to be different than reading it. The premise of this uh, research is that uh, I'm going to consider uh, interactive narratives through the medium of video games uh, wherein the player, user, and reader, these terms will be used interchangeably to address reader, uh, have certain amount of freedom and context of reading a narrative and uh, how uh, it is oppositional to print, oral, and media literature where author-created plot line uh, has reader, reader as just a spectator, an intellectual spectator, whereas in interactive narratives and video games, the reader is actually physically uh, experiencing literature through immersion uh, and how this discourse has uh, had a cultural effect on um, academia as well as um, our understanding as literature. Uh, through video games as an emergent scholarly discourse. Um, to talk about storytelling and participation uh, uh, in this context, storytelling is the most primary art form and ritualistic form of entertainment. Storytelling has been here since as long as we remember. The pictorial things that uh, proto civilizations had back uh, back during uh, the Norman time period or the Egyptians, uh, it has evolved throughout the centuries and millennia and aeons. And as of now, the ritual of storytelling is something that we just do because we have to. We watch a particular show on a television. Uh, while we are having our dinner because it's something that we do, right? Uh, ex it extends our senses in a McLuhanite sense means um, Marshall McLuhan in his extension of man. He talks about how technology uh, becomes an extension of man. That is uh, when we are reading a story, a book per se in a McLuhanite sense is a technology. It is a, uh, extending our visual sense and uh, we have this mental imaginative interpretative quality and uh, we uh, are reading something while we are becoming it we are becoming part of the book we are becoming one with the technology and we are participating in that particular story by extending our sense our visual sense um <clears throat> In Roland ba Barthes' uh, writerly text meaning, uh, can a, a storytelling or any kind of story is a conversation between the reader and the word, right? We don't just say that this particular story is just something that a writer is saying or that is being told to us. We have to work in some way or to some extent to figure out what the writer is saying, or we use our own mind. Like uh, when Bath's uh, questions um, in his SNC about Saracen, Balzac, and the Castrato, we, uh, he talks about what is actually talking, who is actually talking. Is it the writer? Is it the character? Or is it the reader? Who is the maker of the meaning? Uh, Taking this extension of senses and uh, Bath's scriptable, interactive literature allows um, more than one sense to be present while we are reading 
a particular literature and uh, through immersion and physical agency we uh, we uh, like we are immersed in that particular text as well as uh, we are participating in it so uh, we are co-creating a narrative in a very physically causation way confluence of literature and technology and interactive literatures or interactive narr- narratives for co-creation uh, when we are thinking about participation in video games as literature to read lit- video games as literature the mental exercise of interpretation becomes physical uh by when because we are actively participating in the narrative we are in there we are not an intellectual the reader is not an intellectual spectator the reader is part of the narrative the reader has this extent of authority right um the reader has a voice to decide uh it offers um particular physical uh choices to the reader as to how the narrative is going to proceed in interactive literatures the reader is not bound to the human author or the to, to the human creator's plot right we can actually uh, forge our own pathway while we are uh, reading this kind of literature participation and co-creation the voice so uh, to elucidate my point i have uh, given two examples from video games um so super mario is the hypothetical textual literature where um, we bas- we are the reader is on the re- receiving end of the narrative because uh, there is no necessary uh, response or decisive authority that the reader has the reader is following this particular life we are a spectator into the protagonist's life whereas um in the game colossal Ga- cave uh while we are the protagonist we have this uh the, the uh, we have substantial effect on the outcome because the game encourages the reader to read into a particular situation and decide how the narrat- how the player wants the narrative to proceed accordingly um it, it's kind of like a ghost of roads not taken and the reader can assert themselves as someone who can influence as well as create the work of narrative uh the participation uh the pattern of storytelling is actually um you know it comes within the bounds of a part of um, the intentions by the creator as well as how the reader understands the dependence of the reader and the creator is codependent both of them aren't bound to each other which pretty much happens when we are reading and participating um why for example uh, while we are reading uh, joseph conrad's heart of darkness um we have this limit of focalization which we are bound to the Time and uh, I will space. kindly ask you to be attentive to timing. You should come close. Actually, you should um, go into the conclusion. Actually, it's my last slide, ma'am. Okay. Um, so the focalize the time and space um, is focalized through the character of Marlowe. The narrator, the narrative moves um, back and forth as this particular character does we go to the ship when he, we come we go to congo when he does we come back to the ship when he does the you know we have no authority as a reader we are just going with it while uh, in participating the literature we know what we have to do it's a more personal experience we have a voice that can dictate the plot and hence the outcome because we are in there and we accept the laws fundamentals and physics of that time and place because we are not looking at it we are in it um for conclusion and for conclusion i have integrated cultural impacts with it uh being a, a more interactive mode of storytelling the discourse of visual and graphic literatures have started to occupy a place in academia as well as well because of uh, popular culture the shift the shift on ideology and conception of literature is changing the face as we know it 
because uh, yeah, the because how, how do I put it? Because uh, uh, you know, uh, as centuries are moving on, as technology is becoming more accessible, people prefer to have more visual prompts than having to spend uh, imaginative or interpretive analysis by being an intellectual consumer of uh, textual literature. And uh, being a more personalized narrative while actually uh, experiencing the story, this is, uh, though the narrative is unique and individual to each per each player or reader accordingly, um, and it's subjective and unique to each other, this discourse uh, uh, is more, um, uh, I, I, how do I conclude it? I um, and I read. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, true indeed. But even that is a choice. Yeah. So if if you know the uh, visual mm. representation is provided to you, even that's a choice which guides the readers or the spectator. So although it appears more subtle than, let's say, a written text. Uh, so yes. thank you anyway for the invitation to reflect upon such issues.